today we're going to cover nine major plants of the sage step in Palouse. Plants we're going to cover include four grasses, one forb, and four woody shrubs. First up is the blue butch wheatgrass. It's a perennial native. It's a strong, open bunch grass with leaves that are mostly up the stem. One of the key features is that the nodes are often blue or purple. Uh, the seed head is a spike type, and as it gets more mature, those awns will start to fall over to the side, as you can see over here in this picture. Next up is cheatgrass, also known as downy brome. It's an annual and it's introduced. It's a small bunch grass with weak annual roots. Uh, leaf blades, sheaths, and glooms are hairy or pubescent. The seed head is a panicle with slender, weak branches. The spikelets hang in disarray, as you can see right here. It's pretty characteristic. Uh, the florets have stiff, scabrous awns, and um, so they're uh, almost barbed like a bee's stinger so that they, when they get in your sock or uh, something like that, they'll work their way in further and further and they don't want to come out. Uh, spikelets also often turn purple at maturity. Next up is crusted wheatgrass. It's a perennial introduced. It's a strong bunch grass. Leaves are mostly on lower half of the plant. The spike type in fluorescence, and the florets are stacked closely together to form a comb-like spike, as you can see right here. Uh, florets can be on-tipped, but do not have strong awns. Next up is Idaho fescue. It's a perennial native. It's a strong bunch grass from one to three feet tall. It has many thin thread-like basal leaves. Uh, the roots are black and fibrous, which is pretty pretty good indicator. You're looking at Idaho fescue. If you're if you're in doubt, um, dig up a little bit and knock the soil off, and it's it's pretty obvious how dark they are. Uh, the inflorescence is a panicle, and there are small awns on the tip of florets. You can see these these small, thin, thread-like uh, leaves that come straight from the base. Some of them make it up a little bit further, but it's pretty, pretty good indicator right there too. And then, like I said, when you're in doubt, just pull up some of it and you can see the roots, they're pretty dark. Next up is Western Yarrow, our only forb on the list. It's a perennial native. It's a mid-height forb. It has rhizomes, highly divided fern-like leaves right here. Almost look like feathers in a way. Uh, it has a very distinctive odor and uh, medicinal value. Um, I like to think it smells like a, it smells kind of like a like a Band-Aid if you've never smelled it before, or like a doctor's office. It's, a, it's an antiseptic, so that makes sense. Uh, the inflorescence is a corium. That's umbel-like, uh, composite flowers with ray and disc flowers. Um, yep. It's mid-height also, about uh, calf height, I'd say, so about a foot or so. Uh, next up is Big Sagebrush, and our first woody shrub. It's a perennial native. Uh, the shrub is usually two to three feet tall, but it can be much taller. Uh, leaves have three tips. Right here, you can see. Uh, the flowers are not very showy at all, and they're form, they form axles on the top of upper leaves. The seeds are very small. Next up is Deer Brush. It's a perennial native. It's a shrub with dense stems. Leaves are ovate to elliptic with entire margins. And here's one of the key features of it is these three main veins. This plant is included in this list because of its high forage value for native ungulates. It has an inflorescence and a panicle and the flowers are pink to purple. I've also heard of this plant called Mountain Lilac. The next plant we have is Shad Scale Saltbrush. It's a perennial native. 
Uh, it's a low growing, densely branching shrub. The leaves are shaped uh, like fish scales, which is where it gets its name. Uh, there's salt deposits on the leaves, which might be kind of hard to see in this picture over here, uh, but in in real life, uh, you can see the salt forming on the on the outsides of the leaves, um, and it gets that from the soil that's often in um, salt deserts. Uh, the branches end up uh, forming sharp tips, as you can see in this picture right here, and it's, let's use a different color to point that out. Over here, you can see these these ends of these branches end up forming sharps and sharp tips, and that's pretty, pretty good indicator. The flowers are very bland and indiscreet. And the last one we're going to cover is winter fat. It's a perennial native. It's a low-growing shrub, shrub with leaves that are woolly and margins that roll under. This plant has a very high forage value, especially in winter. The flowers and seeds are not very showy at all, forming at the end of branches with lots of white hair around the flowers and seeds. And that should conclude our presentation covering the first nine plants you're going to cover in this course. Thanks. Today we're going to cover nine major plants, the sage, step, and palouse.